Good morning, Pastor Ron Jetter, Emmanuel Lutheran Church, Grandview, Washington, Saturday, the 28th of November, 2020. Thanksgiving Day behind us, the Thanksgiving weekend, moving along, those who have traveled, enjoying one more day with their family, perhaps, uh, or maybe traveling back home today. Many of us did not travel, did not host anyone who traveled, uh, had families that really understood that that we've got to get this COVID under control. And people had to make choices that they were comfortable with. God bless everyone who's traveling or staying home in whatever circumstance. Uh, the two of us with our new pup did just fine. We have been out for walks every day. I've been out putting in new fencing. My knees are sore, my back is sore. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, life is good. It's very good. I'm wearing a t-shirt. Actually, it's not a t-shirt. It's a long sleeve t-shirt. I guess it's still a t-shirt if it's long. I don't know. Anyway, it says, run to feed the hungry. For a donation to the Sacramento Food Bank, I got a shirt and I got a number and I was one of some 50 or 60,000 people and they call it run. But when you're in a crowd that big, if you're doing the 5K, it's barely a crawl to feed the hungry because that whole crowd moves along very slowly for about the first uh, first half mile and then kind of spreads out a little bit and we were we were somewhere uh, in the middle I suppose my daughter and her uh, husband were they did the full 10k so they did a, a, a 5k run prior to then circling back around and joining me and the rest of us doing just the 5k but that was fun uh, the food bank's not doing one this year but my daughter and her husband are going out and doing their 10k separately um, they've been uh, marathon runners so 10k really isn't anything more than a small training run for them and then they'll make their donation to the food bank because that's one of the things um, that we do remember during cold weather people who hunger may be spending more of their money trying to keep their house warm more on heating fuel which leaves less for food so we continue then to put food in the blessing box uh, on third avenue in third avenue third street anyway third third and euclid grandview where the church is where i will be where some of you will be tomorrow morning some of you will be on Zoom. Tomorrow morning, Pastor Gary Rohde will bring us our message, and I'll get to remember what it's like to just sit in the pew. The same will be true the following week when Jake Schumacher will be here as the candidate uh, chosen by our call committee to interview with our congregation. And I will probably open up the link, oh, shortly after 9, 9 or so at the church, and folks can get on. Uh, and Pastor Schumacher will be there then on through probably through 1130 or maybe even uh, after that in order for folks to ask questions. So whether you're in church or on Zoom, Pastor Schumacher a week from tomorrow, Pastor Gary Rohde tomorrow, and tomorrow the first clue of the Advent box. I hope the letter arrived in your home. I didn't send one to myself. Maybe I should have. But I'm hoping that you got uh, the Advent devotional and then that's helpful to you. Uh, my letter with the schedule on it of what we're doing and that gift for you. It's the same as what's in the Advent box, but please don't open it yet. We'll open them together on the 20th, Sunday the 20th, when the fourth and final clue is read by then. You may well have guessed it. So tomorrow, Pastor Gary will give the first clue and you can start guessing. He won't tell you if you're right. Um, I haven't even told him what's in it, but oh, he'll know. Uh, after all, Susie Rohde was the one who wrapped all those individual gifts for all of you. So from the Rohdes and the Jetters and the congregation, uh, a happy Advent to you. I don't know how you're planning on doing Christmas shopping this year. We're doing, like a lot of people, probably more online than, than not. Uh, which means then getting stuff in time to repackage it and get it sent back out. Boy, I wish I'd bought stock in UPS and FedEx and, uh, yeah. Hmm. 
like someone says, if you combine FedEx and UPS, do you get FedEps? Yeah, wordplay. <laughs> someone else said, speaking of wordplay, what is the opposite of adultery? Well, wouldn't that be infantry? No, it wouldn't be. Infantry is, is the uh, lowest level of, of uh, foot soldier in, in an army going way back. Adultery is different than infantry. Adultery is inappropriate physical relationship between two people who are not married. Now, that brings us back into the commandments. Yesterday I talked about uh, what does it mean to be pro vita, to have respect for all life. Uh, and now the next one, you shall not commit adultery. Jesus says, as with, with the other one, if you even look with lust upon another person, that's adultery. In other words, what Jesus is saying is, you've already committed adultery, you've already committed murder, you've already stolen, you've already coveted, you've already blown it. Give yourself credit for nothing. The, whole, the Ten Commandments, says Paul, does not exist for us to check boxes and go, yep, doing that, you know, could use a little more, uh, all right, there, yeah, all right, blew it, but oh, don't, those I'm good on. It's not for us to give ourselves a report card. It's for us to look at and see how badly we are broken, how much we need God in our lives, first of all, to forgive us, second of all, to renew us. Uh, and restore us to right relationship and third of all to give us the same commandments again as gift first as gift to say you still get a chance to build your communities you still get a chance to 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 play well in the sand with each other these are how you do it i'm just giving you some easy hints easy to understand what you can be doing and i know you're going to blow it over and over and I'll forgive you and restore you. Uh, but there will be consequences every time you stray outside these boundaries. Adultery is basically a betrayal of the most basic building block of society, which is why it's here. Um, and adultery back then, no doubt, specifically meant one male person married to one female person uh, because that's the basic biological unit capable of then having little female persons and little male persons, which we call children, and then having grandparents and multi-generations and cousins and aunts and uncles and families. It starts with that couple, which is why we have Ish and Isha uh, in Genesis, and then Adam and Eve also in Genesis, the two different words for male and female or the man and the woman. And that's supposed to be it. Well, modern day society, we have uh, gender, gender identity conversations going on. And we do that remembering that we are all uh, called to compassion and understanding. We are not called to judge others uh, because we have to judge ourselves first. And we judge with impure and improper and broken judgment, inexact judgment. We do the best we can. But uh, what should a family look like? Well, I don't know. But when you're in a relationship, be faithful in the relationship. That's what the command for adultery is. Don't be shopping when you've already made your decision and you've already made the commitment. Um, some people, they'll put it off as long as they can because they're afraid. Once they've made that commitment, it's done. Uh, divorced people, are they adulterer? Well, of course, automatically. And that will always be true. That's why I say we don't just say, oh, um, maybe I've heard the phrase born again virgin. Well, there's no such thing. We're all kind of tainted and it stays with us and we go through life as tainted people allowing that sin that hangs on to us to be our reason for being humble before god and in the presence of one another we're, we're fellow and sister sinners gathering sundays to celebrate that we are nonetheless loved that we are we have a place where we belong 
we're all there together with each other with the same righteousness which is not of our own adultery uh, the breaking apart or the the weakening of the basic trust relationship is so destructive and so inevitable it's just one of those things you shouldn't do that why did God tell Israel and then why did kings have to take multiple wives in order to have plenty of children so that there could be lots of heirs uh, so a lot of a lot of talk today about the rule of law and whether everybody's under the same law back then kings were not under the same law but we're way way earlier than the discussion about kings yet you'll get that during our Wednesday nights uh, priest prophet and king this Wednesday the 2nd of, of uh, December Jesus the great high priest and then on the 9th Jesus the true prophet and then uh, on the 16th Jesus king of the universe so I'll be doing one pastor Gary will be doing one and Ann Adams will be doing one I hope you're looking forward to worshiping uh, Sunday morning and Wednesday during the season of Advent. Hope to see you tomorrow.